David Gears. I'm a self-employed electrician, general contractor. Um, I've, I've never attended a function like this before, and I am amazed to see that only one board member for this, this board that has apparently got a 40-year history of blowing our tax money and not, not moving us forward in any direction at all. <laughs> in fact, the, the exact opposite, 10 years ago, or well, now 15 years ago, I left this state and went to Atlanta, Georgia to get to get a start with my business and to get moving forward and, and to do better for my children. I came back because I wanted to try and do something for this town. And I look around and, and it's still the same people, the same fight. Carl Palladino has, according to the to, according to the New York Times, Carl Palladino has a net worth of over $150 million. Uh, also, according to the, to the uh, Buffalo paper, uh, this agency has, has doled him out about $12.4 million over wow. the, the course of the last 10 years. Um, according to uh, another report, he received another, and that was in 2008, he got another $1.5 million from, a, from another deal in Amherst that was also attached to an Industrial Development Council or agency. Uh, where's the industry? Where is the industry? Where is I mean, what do we need another freaking hotel for? What do we need another apartment building for? What, where are you bringing us jobs? This is what you've been empowered to do. We, we all pay you to do this. And you have for, managed in 40 years to lower the number of jobs in this area by, what, 70%? Really? In 40 years? And we should continue to pay you for what? I, I would like an answer to that question. Just so being that you are the only board member here, why should we continue to pay a board of fat cats to sit around and dole money on somebody who has more than enough money to do this project? He could stroke the check today and not even feel it. Why does he need a million dollars when I can think of hundreds of local businesses, mine as an example, an infusion of cash in my contracting company would, would enable me new equipment and, and better contracts. 20 grand would make a world of difference to my company. But you're going to drop a, a million dollars on a guy who already has $150 million, so he'll take a dilapidated old building and spend four months with about 65 guys for, eh, we'll, we'll call it a, a total of around, eh, maybe around a million, million five in labor. And then what? Now you got a building full of apartments. Where's the jobs? Where's the industry? Okay, since you've responded to me, I just said, usually at public hearing, the board members use, listen because there's a public hearing. But I really responded because you addressed me directly. Uh, I'm not sure what other board members are. I got a call last night stating that there would be a public hearing. They might have been in the same situation as I. Either the email sent out, maybe been sent out and was missed, or they were not sent out. I'm not saying that, but I'm very stunned to see only I showed up for a board meeting. Yet still, if a person from Occupy Buffalo had called me, I would not know about the meeting. You're not really dealing with a whole lot of faith in your, in your counsel here. I mean, so, I'm just so, saying. So I'm I, just saying. Say, I would say they might be in the same situation as I. They might not have gotten the email that was sent out for this meeting. Okay, then, then why do we pay you people if you don't even know when your meetings are? <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Like, I'm just saying. I know it's a rhetorical question, and this is my... No, that's a solid, honest, that's a question. Okay, that's I'm going to say question. that I've been on the board for about a, two months. I've attended two meetings. When I know there's a public hearing, I know there's a public hearing, you have to be there to find out what the opinions of the public is, and that's why I'm here. So if I don't have answers, it's because, number one, I haven't been on the board long enough, and number two, I have to really hear the comments from the public in order to make a well, uniform and wise decision. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I don't know anybody. I don't know anything about this until last week when when somebody said, "Hey, we should we're going to go do this," and I and I started to look into it. And so I'm getting even less time on it than you do. But the fact of the matter is that for 40 years they've spent billions of dollars, and we've lost. Jobs. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling for a vote of no confidence. I'm saying that this, this company should be torn down, this building should be torn down, and we should redevelop this spot. Because, <laughs> because, something for this economy. because right now, all these people have done have taken, it's, I mean, it's been 40 years we saw Bethlehem Steel go away. Where was your economic development for them? We've seen 
right. dozens of companies closed their doors. American Axle's gone, and uh, you yeah. know, hundreds of employers across the entire region have left, and billions of our dollars have gone to keeping them. And Carl Palladino has apparently got 15 million of it. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking, he doesn't need another million. I'm just saying. And <laughs> if, you, if, if, the, if the board doesn't agree with that, then maybe we really need to seek a new board. My name is Laura Toth. I was born in Buffalo. I've been following the ECIDA things throughout the Pi Buffalo. And I've done some my own research, and it raises a bunch of questions about Palladino and this particular property. In an article published in the Spree magazine, I believe it was last April, it says that there were over 30 building violations. So I went into Buffalo Housing Court on Google to see what I could find out about Palladino. And the one statement that stands out that he said to the housing court about this property was that he's already taken care of three out of ten <laughs> violations, building code violations, and he will get to the rest when the market <laughs> shifts. <laughs> well, it's been ten years since he's owned this vacant building. He continues to have these housing violations, and I also see that Buffalo Housing Court isn't stepping up its game because it is not even addressing an ongoing investigation. It is not following up on the violations that he has. So he has all these violations. He doesn't give a crap because he's going to get money from ECIDA, cost of doing business, go ahead and have all the violations, make the building look like crap for 10 years, and then come in here and get the money so that he can have 42 upscale apartments. Mm. It's, it's just crap. And it really pisses me off. And I'm going to keep staying with the ECIDA, and I'm going to keep supporting Occupy Buffalo's <laughs> statements on this matter because it just disgusts me that people are homeless, the teachers are having problems, we're not getting supplies, we're the second poorest city. I mean, this is crazy. And this is our unelected <laughs> officials making these decisions, spending this money, and I'm, and I'm struggling. I'm struggling. And I see Mr. Palladino thumbing his nose at Buffalo Housing Court, and it really pisses me off. On this particular project, this <coughs> Greystone issue. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Jamie Nicole Stewart. I'm with Occupy Buffalo. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research, sources like Buff Business First, Buffalo News, Buffalo Rising, New York Times. Um, Palladino bought that Greystone property in 2002 for 150 grand. Um, that was 2002. In 2003, there was an accident where a worker, where the roof collapsed and a worker was injured. So construction stopped a year later. So s pretty much since 2003, there has been a giant hole in the center of this building. Wow. For almost a decade, there has been a hole in the roof of this building. If you look at aerial pictures. The roof is like almost a third of the building. The hole is a third of the building. Um, so it's been left open to the elements for almost a decade. He sat on it. As far as from what I can read from um, neighbors and news sources, you know, com their comments, um, there's been no work done on this property whatsoever. So to me, a property that sits for almost a decade with a giant hole in the roof, that qualifies you as a slumlord. And mm -hmm. then you have the nerve to boast about having a net worth of $150 million. You have a success, you have multiple successful companies, and you're going to come to the ECIDA and ask for a tax break. I, th I think it's an insult to, and it's insulting to our intelligence. Mm -hmm. I can't even believe it's going up for a vote. Um, as Laura said, he's had over 34 um, orders of appearance to the city housing court. Um, I think, honestly, I've, a couple of uh, the other properties of his I've looked into, he sometimes has a tendency, it seems, to sit on these properties for about 10 years. And I think it's almost like demolition by neglect. Mm -hmm. hmm. If he doesn't get this money, he's it. yeah, he's just going to let it continue to rot and be an eyesore in the city. We've, you know, I think, I can't believe he hasn't been <laughs> fined ungodly amounts 
support the way 